Adelaide. Now to the match of the day at the Bay between Glenelg and Port Adelaide. What a game it turned out to be. The Bays had a rest last week. On the other hand, Port Adelaide played three games, so it was a very tough assignment for the Magpies. We're going to join the match at the one minute mark of the second quarter. Joining me in commentary, John Robinson and Kim Dillon. At left half forward for Port Adelaide. Well, they're into, the, into attack already. Out it goes to McDermott. Tried to get his kick away. Donovan, Gibbs, kick smothered. Well done by Port Adelaide. Ball A's. Kerr doing some useful things. Leslie overran it. Seabohm, searching handball, but put Stringer under pressure. Seabohm, good work, and he gets it across to Marshall. Marshall, good looking kick, but out comes Harvey, and he's in front of Butterick on that occasion, and he takes a good strong mark. John Harvey, rugged defender. Uses the run of Greg Boyd as he kicks around his body, and that's a good diving mark taken by Andrew Ops. They want to get in pretty quick, quick with this breeze. That's exactly what he does, but it's very wide. Screw Pant doesn't give his forwards much opportunity there. Taken by Grenvold in turn west. Oh, over the head of uh, McDermott. Now the could come unstuck here as Ops swoops on that, sweeps in with one hand. Now pushes out a pass, and he's found Arlen Kennedy, who was given an absolute bath in that first term by Tony Simons. Nice looking kick off the boot. Smith in there. So too Lum. Taken by Rowan. Smith snap shot around his body. He's put it through. Oh, magnificent right foot snap. So Port Adelaide open up with a goal in the two minute mark of this second term. And they now move on to six straight goals. Trailing by one point. There's only one behind the difference. That's what the Maggies wanted. They wanted that first goal on the board. And uh, the swooper there was Rowan Smith. And that's his go, uh, Rowan Smith. Very clever. Reads the ball off the ground or off the packs. Swips on it very quickly and is very good around the goals. He's a very much a one-touch player. Gets the ball from hand to boot very, very quickly, but also very accurately. That's important. And that goal makes only one behind the difference. The Maggie's on a bit of a roll. Magnificent kicking too. Just the one point scored in the whole game so far. One single point anyway. Harvey rushes past, runs into Salisbury, gets his kick away though. Gibbs, almost a good mark from behind. Picked up by Donovan. That was meant for Grenvold. Eventually it comes to that player. Good play by Glenelg as they run it out of defence. Out toward Arlen Kennedy, who's got his second kick of the game, and Rowan Smith takes it on his chest. Well, John, one wonders whether it's time to use the run and enthusiasm of Peter Maynard, a well, match winner on his day, still sitting on the bench. Yep, I don't know that uh, he's uh, necessarily right in this defensive situation that they're playing at the moment. Is Rowan Smith's kick at the beauty, straight through the middle. Another goal to Port Adelaide, that's his second, and Port Adelaide looking strong and willing in this opening couple of minutes in the second quarter they race to seven goals 42 points Glenelg 6-1-37 yes, the Maggies have hit the front and all credit to them but that man Rowan Smith there two quick goals and that's the value of the man didn't see much of him in the first term but he has the ability he's the opportunist half forward flanker when an opportunity comes his way he doesn't waste them too often and that's what any side requires out of a forward line player well done Four minutes gone. Lum with the tap down towards Ops. In there is working hard Simons. He's well tackled. Eventually umpire David Weston will have to ball up. And then metre outside of that centre circle. 42 plays 37. Looks like we're going to have a great game of football here. Aber over the top. Taps it straight down to the man that's tagging him in Salisbury. He gets a clearing kick out towards Winton. Didn't receive a good bounce. This allows Boyd to come through. But Winton's first to recover. Needs support. Has to kick around his body. In fact, he kicked backwards. Stringer sets himself and received a high tackle around the head. Showed a lot of courage. Good player, Alan Stringer. Former North Adelaide man. Left after being in dispute with their current coach. Oh, nearly a one-handed mark. And once again, Weston will ball up on that right forward flank. And John, once they get the ball in this area, it's imperative they score. Yes, it is. Well, we saw the Magpies with the ability to add five in that first term against a strong breeze. The Bays will have to be able to do likewise. Phillips knocks it on. Snabikla. Out it comes to Butterick. He's got a chance if he can pick it up. Kerr. Brilliant work. Out of bounds. Very intelligent play by Kerr. Kept it low. It went out of bounds. And that boundary throw in taking place in the right forward pocket for the Bays. Christie. Marshall Williams number 10 for Port Adelaide this is umpire Weston plenty of players around this ball at the moment Christie and Phillips McDermott got tackled still got his kick away can go all that far out it comes to Stringer beautifully done high kick by McDermott 
Winton stood back and took a chance. Out comes Snabikla. Strong tackle applied. Is it holding the ball? Umpire Weston comes in and he'll ball it up. That was a very strong tackle by Hodgman. And the ball being bounced about 50 metres, probably 40 metres out in front of the Glenelg goals. Christie sets himself to do battle with Phillips. Phillips held his ground well. The strength of Greg Phillips and a sweeping handball out to Cannon. Smothered by Simons, the man of the moment. Snaps on the left boot. Oh, he's kicked it. Oh, tremendous play, Tony Simons. That's his second goal, and what a clever footballer he is. He certainly is, Ken. What more do you need to say? Uh, great desperation was happening there. The Glenelg Stovers persisting into this breeze to try and get that goal that we've spoken about is so important against this breeze. But equally, uh, Port Adelaide were defending very strongly. Phillips took the ball, got the long handball out to Kennedy. And, uh, well, Simon's coming in, read exactly what was in Arlen Kennedy's mind, I'm sure. Snared or intercepted the handball and popped his second goal through. Good stuff from Tony Simons. Arlen Kennedy must think he's dreaming at the moment. Harvey out wide. It's dangerous because it's out near Tony Simons. Picked up, though, by Grenvold. Across to Tony Simons, who picks up and does it magnificently. Gets around off without any effort at all. Alan Stringer, who had such a wonderful game a couple of weeks ago, got about 40 touches. And the way he's playing today, he's probably going to get that many. Ralph didn't take the mark. Picked up by Phillips. No, he overran it. Out of the uh, pack, a kick by Arlen Kennedy, but things aren't going well for him at the moment because the kick goes straight back to Stringer. One wonders when a move might be made. Kennedy's getting a hiding out there. Stringer puts it in, and there's that man again, Tony Simons. But something surely will have to happen there. Simons puts it in, looking for Butterick. Up high, gets it on the second grab. It's an amazing effort by Tony Simons. The quick play on there is McDermott. Oh, that has to be 15. The quick play on was accurate, it was clever, it was to McDermott, the bodies came in strong, but uh, Glenelg, I think, have suddenly responded to the way Port Adelaide come back in the late part of that first term and the early part of the second. They've decided into this breeze they've got to work hard, and now there's some looseness in the Port defence. There's Butterick, who put the pass across to McDermott in the first place, just casually drifted into that left forward pocket and accepted the pass from McDermott. Well, Butterick, very talented player, an exceptional kick, but uh, McDermott certainly increased his angle. He fires away, and they've paid the penalty for increasing that angle. It's a minor score. The second minor score of the day, and it's the difference in the scores at the moment. Canelga on seven goals, two. Port Adelaide on seven straight goals. So do behind the difference in favour of the Bays, and they've shown an ability to score against this breeze too. So we're all set for a great game here. David Harvey goes straight down the centre. Snabikla knocked it on, picked up by Harrison. Abernathy went without the, the ball. Good, strong tackle there as... Seabohm goes to ground. On it goes toward half forward now for Port Adelaide. Abernathy gets it across to Harrison. Harrison tried to get his kick away. Beautifully smothered though. Picked up by Seabohm again. He's doing a reasonable job. And the free kick going against Port against the Glenelg. It goes to Kerr. Roger Kerr at left half forward for Port Adelaide. Now it's going back to Seabohm. That's the way the crowd thought it was going eventually. Originally I should say. And now it's going back to Kerr. Sure what happened then, John? You better Everybody's explain. confused. I'm not even going to try. The umpires don't seem to know, but Kerr's put it forward. Long kick by Kerr. Carey in the centre of the pack. Couldn't take it. Goes through for a behind. Well, I'm confused, that's for sure, Kim. I'm definitely staying out of that one. <laughs> I think we all will. Let's just let the game go in. It's a further behind on the board, though, and it's to Port Adelaide. They moved to seven goal one. Glenelg, seven goals two. What a great game. Ten minutes gone in this second term. West puts that out very close to the boundary. Up high was Hodges, taken by Ross Gibbs. His kick along the boundary line gets plenty of distance. First there will be Hobbs. Clever play, but outsmarted by Stringer. Tried to get the handball back towards Sneezer. Just missed that player. Martin Leslie clearing, and Leslie playing in defence for Port Adelaide, and Greg Phillips appears to have gone. No, he hasn't. Leslie was just a long way down the ground. Well, that's just evidence in itself of how hard these uh, Port Adelaide players are working at the moment. For a fleeting moment there, I thought Phillips may have gone to centre-half forward. Jim West puts it back into play, out toward Carey. Oh, great mark, Peter Carey. Beautifully done. McDermott, awkward-looking kick. Boyd will get there first, but he overran it. It was a poor bounce. Picked up by Hodgman, gave it to Winton. Long kick and beautifully dispatched to Butterick. And Butterick's about... 40 metres out, virtually straight in front. Brilliant vision by uh, Jeff Winton on that occasion. It's already kicked one. Long kick by Butterick. Swinging back. Is it a goal? A 
Oh, he's missed it. Well, Butterick's put the last couple of minor scores on the board, but uh, more importantly, the Bays have got it up their end against this breeze and scoring as Port did in the first quarter. Craig Ebert kicks to the outer side. Kerry with the thump away. Ball comes to ground. Alan Kennedy working harder there, but his opponent, Tony Simons, has picked well, out the crumb. He's having an absolute picnic out there on that outer wing, and he drops it in short to his uh, vice captain in Chris McDermott. Tony Simons can do no wrong out there. Not only is he winning plenty of possessions, he's using them absolutely brilliantly. So he scored two goals. McDermott, about 45 metres out. He also is offline. So this is an amazing game, John. Both sides kicking into the breeze are still managing to score consistently. Well, both sides showing a tremendous amount of desperation and determination, I think, and that's, that all goes well for both sides. Craig Ebert, long kick straight down the centre. Stringer from behind. Marshall, whistle goes, play on. Seabohm, loose men all over the place. Winton. Well, it's as easy as that. We said it just a moment ago. Kim Dillon, the sides are pushing the ball well into this breeze. But mistakes being made also and being capitalised on tremendously well. On that time, there was Winton and, well, a teammate alongside him too. Both loose across that half-forward line. It was almost a casual approach. Won the ball, turned around, face on the goal and straight through without any real desperation or pressure against them whatsoever. And that's unusual because the game has been highlighted by a lot of pressure. And that goal was set up with some great discipline by Alan Stringer mm. with that first spoil and a beautiful reflex handle by Marshall. Kerry. Over the head of Tamay. Taken by uh, Hodges. In fact, it was Leslie who gave it to Brown around his body. Darren Smith sits himself. Couldn't take it. Kerr in there working hard. Out towards Leslie again. Back off the handle was poor. It's been taken by Seabohm. He's under pressure. Young Brown fights pretty hard down there. He's a bit of a terrier. He's just struggling to pick up the tempo of this game today. Semler again. Lum up high. Down towards Smith. Kicks it out. Oh, there's Simons again lurking. Will he pick up that one? He crashes through. He may be in trouble. His handle is intercepted by Borlase. Borlase shoots at goal, but he's offline. And I suppose you just can't do everything right in a game of football. Well, I think, you know, one mistake out of about 95 efforts isn't too bad. That, that's making it a bit ridiculous. But that's the sort of influence he's having on this game, Tony Simons. He's having an absolutely brilliant game. Ross Gibbs, his target is Carey, no doubt. From behind, couldn't take it. Plenty of Glenel Guernsey's there. Empire's sorted out a free kick, and it'll go to Hodgman. So Hodgman, deep in defence at the moment. He's in the back pocket for the Bays. Stringer's loose. Decides to go over Stringer's head towards Snabikla. Almost a good mark behind. Great mark taken by McDermott. That was a spectacular leap. He read that perfectly. Centre wing. Over centre wing. Simons. Almost a good mark, but it's taken by Alan Kennedy. One of the very few times he's beaten Simons so far today. Left footer. Phillips. Beautifully disposed. Lovely kick. Good mark too. Across to Harvey. Running through centre wing on that outer side of the ground. Got quite a bit of time. He decides to go for the long kick. It is a long kick, but it's offline, and it hits the behind post. And there'll be a throw-in in the right forward pocket. Quick transference of play. Show the value of the old Maggie style there, of getting the ball, moving it quickly, and with length. length. Uh, but just a little bit of stray with the kick. I think the Maggies need a bit more of that. 13 minutes gone. The ball's tapped out forward. Tamay there in opposition to Brown. Brown picked it up nicely, tried to get the handball across, now taken by Grenvold. His kick out towards Salisbury, couldn't take that one. Kerr traps it nicely, he's grabbed by the leg, play on the call, handball out towards Smith, it goes goers, it's through. Well, they needed that goal, and that was tremendous play by Roger Kerr, and that's Smith's second goal. So the Tigers are on 8-4-52, Port Adelaide 8-3, 51. Only that one behind the difference, and uh, certainly we're not being let down. We're witnessing a great game of footy here. Perhaps now is the chance for Port Adelaide to come back. They'll need to slip into gear. They've got the use of this breeze. The quarter is at least halfway over. We're at the 15-minute mark. But uh, once again, Kerr, in the thick of everything, set up that opportunity for Darren Smith. We've had five goals kicked so far in this quarter. Port Adelaide on the march again, although this time it's Carey who does everything right. Gave it across to Hodgman, and Hodgman, lovely-looking kick. And this will bounce in front of McDermott. With him is Williams. McDermott having to work hard. Pushes it through his legs. Good play. Tony Simons out there. And eventually the umpire will come in. And that's umpire Semler. And he'll 
ball it up. And Gary Christie off with what appears to be a leg injury, and young Chig Whitten's gone into the forward pocket for the Tigers. Carey and Lum. Carey uncontested this time. Snabikla comes through. They bottle that play up at left half forward once again. It's eight goals, four. Plays eight goals, three. Eight, four, 52. That's Glenelg. Port, eight, three, 51. And we've played 16 minutes in the second quarter. Taken by Hodgman coming into the game with some, some of that old brilliant, beautiful play by Kimmy Hodgman. Centres that ball, or Harrison thumps away. Thought he may have marked that one. Chig Whitten with all the pace first there. Oh. Farmed out the handball. Marshall under pressure. Tapped it back towards Boyd. And the, the Bays, oh, in fact, let's try the Magpies. We'll get out of trouble here. One on one. Hodges first to recover against Temme. His handball out in the direction of his opponent, Temme, who shoots one out towards Stringer. The Tigers are about to set something up again. The pass looking for Hodgman. Couldn't take it. Abernathy, well tackled. Play on the call. That's good umpiring. Not sure what the crowd are shouting about. That was great umpiring. Harvey out to E, but now this time the Magpies are out of trouble. Long kick by Harvey. Smith couldn't take it over the top. Here's a chance for Seabone to clear. Whistle's gone. And the free kick is going the way of Port Adelaide, you can tell, because the crowd go berserk. Smith, right half forward, shoots it toward Rowan Smith. Great mark, Rowan Smith! He's already kicked two. He kicked the first two goals in this quarter. Courageous mark. And Rowan Smith, directly in front, 30 metres out. A chance to put Port Adelaide's ninth goal on the board. Well done, Rowan Smith. And Port Adelaide go to nine goals, three, 57, Glenelg, eight, four, 52. That's the third goal to Rowan Smith, all coming in this particular term. More importantly, a goal that's put the Magpies back in front when they've got the advantage of this breeze. But Rowan Smith, that's what he's there for. It's what he does so well around that forward line. He's a good operator. He's very much a one-touch player. In fact, a one-grab mark on that occasion. But has the ability to get the ball to boot and kick very, very accurately once he does create an opportunity. One he grabbed for himself with a great mark on that occasion. 17 and a half minutes gone. Five-point advantage to the Magpies. The ball comes out towards Nick chick -Widden. Looks for support. Doesn't need it. Goes it alone. Kicks out wide looking for Kerry. Super doesn't take possession of that. And in fact, he's lost all chance of possession now as the handball comes out towards Kerr. Sells the dummy around Chig Whitten. Two bounces. Pretty likely tight, Roger Kerr. Looks a useful prospect. Kicks in long. Big spoil from behind. Rowan Smith again. Man of the moment in this third quarter. has kicked three goals. Brown tries to crash his way through the pack. This is good umpiring. They're letting it go. Now the handball by Simons was a beauty out towards uh, Salisbury. In turn to Winton. Strong player, Jeff Winton. Strong as an ox. Kicks out wide and he found John Schnabickler who gets one of his rare possessions in this game of football. Schnabickler at right half forward. He's going long. Carey lurking behind there. Can he take the mark? And he has. We've seen some wonderful marks in this game so far. And that is no exception. There's no doubt about big super Carey. The ball was worked up the ground. The lovely pass came in from Winton towards Schnabickler as Kim mentioned, one of his rare touches. And the big fella started cruising in from that scoreboard left forward pocket to make position in front of goal. Took the grab and now lines up for the goal. 424 games, Peter Carey. And he's put it through. That's his first. What a champion he's been over the years. And in fact, his 497th goal. Incredible. A, a, an amazing performance, really. Obviously not for this game, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> not for this game. It's only his first for this game. But it's a real captain's goal. He was reading the play. He came in from the pocket and said, well, I better wander in here. There's a chance to grab a goal and kick, his, and kick one for my side. And as a captain, he's put them back in front. A great effort from the big fella. And incidentally, it was Simons again who set up that play from the half-back flank. Christie back into the ruck. Chig Whitten enjoying his run on the ball. Push in the back. David Weston was going to let that one go for a while. The fortunes of this particular quarter are ebbing and flowing a little bit. The leads change hands a couple of times. Which side's going to break away? Chick Whitten kicks to the outer flank. Oh, well done by Harrison. Beat two opponents. Now kicks long to wobbly kick. Brown front position, and that's a good mark. Certainly has some talent. Plays on quickly. Gets it on one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, good spoil away by Donovan. 
Leslie in there. And Seabone quite happy to see that one go over the line. I mentioned just a while ago, 9-4 Glenelg plays 9-3 Port Adelaide. The battle's really on here at the moment. The Bays have got things against them as far as the Breeze is concerned, but fighting hard. Can the Maggie get up? Just a point in it. Still battling for it. Ball lays, gets it out to Kerr. This is danger. Kerr kicks toward goal, and Tony Simons is there on the last line of defence. Good play by Tony Simons. Gives it across to Chigwitten. Doesn't look unlike Simons. He's not quite as tall. That handball not quite so good. And Marshall couldn't get there. It's out of bounds. Huge crowd here at the Bay Oval. In fact, I'd have to say, John, you mentioned earlier 7,000, but it's definitely swelled. You couldn't get a lot more in here at uh, the Bay Oval at the moment. So I would say we'd be in excess of 10,000, possibly. As Christie gets a kick away, Harrison, the speedster again, weaves his way through. It's a high kick. Rowan Smith underneath that. Greenvold up high was a big leap. From Borlase, he couldn't take it. Kerr again, an awkward-looking left foot kick will go across the face of goal for a minor score. So at the 21 and a half minute mark of this second term, scores are absolutely locked away on 58 points apiece. This will be West to kick the ball back into play. A little undecisive at the moment, or indecisive. There's the kick. Hine almost a good mark. Christie knocks it on, out toward Marshall. Well done, good persistence by Marshall. That's good play as he kicks it toward centre. No one able to take it cleanly. Through comes Winton, beautifully done. Gave it across to Stringer. Stringer's kick out toward Carey. Lumbers, up, lumbers after it. Hodgman, long handball. Surely another goal for Glenelg coming up. This is Snavikla and Snavikla goal. That's his first. And that all started in defence. Well, it certainly did. Glenelg showing the ability, as Port did in the first term, to play hard, well, use the ball intelligently against this breeze. David Marsh back to his brilliant best with that particular movement, breaking away, dummying the handball. Then they worked the ball down to Winton, under string. The pass wasn't good, but the big fella in Kerry had lumbered out from full forward, got himself in front. The clever handball to Hodgman, who had two loose players to use up forward. The, the one he used was Sneed Beckler for his first goal, and they're a goal in front. Hines doing the ruck work. Ball came down to Brown. In there is Christie again. And once again, a ball up. And that breeze still pretty strong. Favouring the northern end, I would say it'd have to be at least three goals. We can see the paper sweeping across the grandstand. Hines again with a big tap. Taken by Kerr. He's a talented footballer. Quick feed off over to Wobbs. He's been quiet over and turned to Brown. One way, then the other. Back to Wobbs. Throws it onto the left boot and has banged it through the middle. Quick reply by the Magpies. Wobbs first goal. And once again, the scores are locked away. Well, what can you say? We're witnessing a tremendous game of football here today. It's got everything. The sides battling hard and intelligently against the Breeze to score their goals. And then the sides going in well with it in Port Adelaide. And particularly pleasing to see the two young fellas combining there in Obbs and Brown. Intelligent stuff from the pair of them. And a great snap in the end result by Obbs to bring up uh, a goal for himself there. His first, in fact. And to make those scores level again on 64 points apiece. Nine goals kicked so far in this quarter. There were 11 kicked in the first term. Christie over the top. Stringer out wide. McDermott got it from Grenvold. And McDermott's kick is a lovely one. Carey. Harvey was with him. Carey battling hard. In goes Chigwitten. Gets around. Has a look at the goal. The kick is a lovely looking kick. This could be his first goal. Oh, what a goal. His first of the match. And little Chigwitten kicked his first for the game and Glenelg go to 11 goals for 70 Port 10 for 64 well little Nick Chigwedden he's a rover that's what he's on the ground as and he showed all the attributes of a good rover on that occasion nose over the ball very low to the ground burst out of the pack with the ball had the quick look at goal and the snap was very very good that's what roving when you're resting in the forward line is all about did it to perfection can the tradition of Port Adelaide fight back with a quick reply? Couldn't get better conditions. We've mentioned that breeze. It's certainly not affecting the standard of play. The sun is out. Tremendous day's football. Brown in there, and once again we'll have a bounce. We're right into time on now in this second term. 11 4 70 plays Port Adelaide 10 4 64. One goal the difference. 
Maynard still yet to come on the ground. So that'll be a bonus for Graham Corns if things get tight in this second half. The ball comes out towards Rowan Smith. He's had three goals in this term, taken by Arlen Kennedy. Round his body. Front position, in fact, is Maynard. He snuck onto the ground. And straight away into the action. Maynard's kick is wide. Grenvold, good mark. Plays on quickly and gives it across to Stringer. Now Stringer's being told by Winton to kick long, and that's exactly what he does. The kick is long and strong and carry. Oh, oh, what a mark. He is starring. He's kicked one, and he's having a few words to Harvey. I'm not sure what he's telling him, but he's certainly not reciting poetry. Yeah, I think John Harvey's suggesting he's got to go right around on the angle, line up with the centre of the goal, as the rule states. succeeded in doing his giving away the 15 metre penalty easy as you like Kerry puts his second on the board suddenly the bays are two goals clear what an amazing effort against this breeze if he had have taken that 15 metre penalty he would have been in the crowd and having to kick around his body underneath his legs but he didn't have to do that it was a goal well the bays showing tremendous character here as Portola did in the first term they uh, they had a seven point advantage at quarter time Port had the advantage of the four or five goal breeze in this second term but at the moment the Bays have increased that seven point advantage at quarter time to 12 points at the moment into time on second term. Abernathy over the top in an extremely uh, quiet player and the ploy of uh, having him tagged by Scott Salisbury is certainly proving to be very effective. Just on two minutes of time on in this second term already passed. Port Adelaide need a quick goal. They've let a lot of that hard work in the first term come unstuck as the Bays go forward again. It's McDermott with a left foot kick. Hotman dies. Oh, he nearly caught it between his knees. Couldn't quite control it. Sweeping handball by Williams. Out towards John Harvey. Uses the left boot to drop that one in front of Darren Smith. They've got to play on quickly, and that's exactly what Smith does. Putting it out in front of Hodges. Now, Leslie wants it in there quick. Hodges taking too long. Leslie screaming for it. Now that kick's high, extremely high. Hasn't made it easy for Leslie. The ball comes to ground and eventually is forced over the line. Minor score, Port Adelaide 65, trailing Glenelg 76. There's still 11 points in favour of the, uh, the Glenelg side as that one will have to go back. Uh, kicked in before the goal umpire finished waving the flags. But Port Adelaide are being forced wide. They're not using this breeze intelligently at the moment. You'll find that the Bay defence has the ability to push them very wide on most occasions. In fact, Darren Smith added to the problem then by playing on along the boundary line. So they've got to go more direct. West goes to the members' side. Good mark there taken by Obbs. Short, more direct. Out toward a more central location. It's taken by Kerr. Kerr goes into the forward pocket. Borlays over the top of West. Good defensive work. Picked up by Brown, number 21 for Port Adelaide. Over to Phillips. Phillips has to balk and then gets a shot at goal. The kick is... It's offline, but it wasn't far enough, and West takes it on the last line of defence. Rowan Smith comes back five metres to give James West an opportunity to kick over his mark, and that's what he'll have to do. Umpire calls play on. West kicks to the grandstand side. Stringer with a spoil or Marshall. That was out of play already, but the umpire didn't see it that way. I thought that ball may have just gone over the line. It's very touch and go, Kim. It was... Uh, that the Abbevani umpire is in the perfect position there. Remember a classic decision like that uh, last season in a state game? Certainly do. That was very <laughs> close. Not unlike that one. Arlen Kennedy receives the free kick. Places that ball out towards centre half forward. Harrison couldn't take the mark. And once again, we'll have a ball up. We've had four minutes of time on in this second term. And David Weston will bounce the ball about 45 metres out from the Port Adelaide goal. 76 plays, 65 in favour of the Bays, Smith over the top, ball lays, gets his short kick away, Simons will be there first, had to back his judgement, picked up by Obbs, out it goes toward Leslie, he stood back and took a chance, picked up now by Harrison, snap and go, he's got it, that's his first, good goal by Harrison, Porter 11 goals, 5, 71, Glenelg 12, 4, 76. Harrison's been uh, quietly getting through quite an effective game for the Port Adelaide side down there and that was a goal that was desperately needed by them. He snuck in there and uh, the, the snap was accurate. The Port Adelaide at last have decided to try centering that ball and going in that more direct approach to goal. For too long they've been messing around, around the flanks. They must go straight down the centre and time's running out in this turn. 
Christie with the tap, out to McDermott. Oh, pirouetting out of the pack was Alan Stringer. Out towards Chigwidden. There's a test of pace there. Chigwidden got there first. No one to handle to, looking for support. Simon's in there. That's tremendous effort by uh, Stephen Williams. Fighting desperately. Now the ball tapped out by Kerry. And great desperations by, by both players on both sides there. That's the word we've used a lot today. Desperation, desire, call it what you like. Good intelligent use of the football and there's plenty of desperation on just at the moment. Big tap by Hines. Once again, players stack in on the top of the ball there and uh, Port Adelaide pretty desperate back there and they want to be too. Six minutes into time on the siren will sound. Any second they can't afford the base to get another goal here. The Magpies currently trail by five points. 12 goals kicked in this quarter. Ball lays over the top. Stringer knocks it on intelligently to Simons. Kerr. That was touch and go. Abernathy runs through centre. Long one. Smith setting himself. Can he take the mark? No, he can't. Through come Glenelg defenders. One of them is Donovan. Desperately gets a kick toward the boundary line. That was good intelligent play. Maynard is first there, but the line beats both of them. The other player running in was... Arlen Kennedy and there'll be a throw in at left half forward Leslie Brown will be there first but once again the line too close and out of bounds the siren must go very shortly as we mentioned 12 goals kicked in this term 76 plays 71 McDermott kicks mother off the pack could this be Port Adelaide's last chance that player was held and there's the siren to end a great Entertaining second term of quarter of football. Glenelg 12 476, Port Adelaide 7571. Well, it was a great game for three quarters, but Port ran out of steam in that last term. Glenelg 22 goals, 10, 142 to Port, 15, 13, 103. A winning margin to Glenelg by 39 points. After the match, John Robinson spoke with a happy Graham Corns. Well, Graham, 39-point victory is a good one, but it was a very interesting game. It doesn't tell the true story of the game. Oh, well, it was a very good game of football. There's no doubt uh, the first half was tough and tight, and uh, there was nothing in it at half time. And their third quarter was extremely good. We were just lucky and fortunate to get two quick goals late in the first quarter. But then our last quarter was, was, was very good. Very, very good. One problem you appeared to have today was settling down the key forward position, centre-half forward and full forward. Had to throw things around a bit? Well, only because we lost Warren Ralph, and that, that unsettled us because you lose a full forward, but we were fortunate we could uh, throw the big fellas in there, and, uh, um, and in the end, John Sneed picked the struggle, but we were able to use Craig Budrick there and still, uh, still have good efficiency, particularly late. I thought one of the features of the game today was the intelligent use of the ball into that breeze, which was pretty strong. And a seven-goal, two-final turn must have been particularly pleasing. Well, it was, particularly when we only had two goals uh, latitude at three-quarter time. But again, we, there's a couple of things you can do. You can either sit on it and hope to hold them out, or you can just go out and attack. And we, you know, we did attack and pay dividends. Good over to the season so far. Two good wins. You must be pleased at this point. Oh, yeah. Well, it's great to win. It's great to win early games, but they are early. Early wins are insignificant, only apart from the fact they give you two points. And, you know, it's too early for anyone to make bold predictions, and it's too early for anyone to get carried away with with, with good form because you, you don't win grand finals or, at this time of year. All you Certainly can do not. is qualify. For them. All the best for the rest of the year. Thanks, Robbie. So Graham Corn's not getting overly excited. Let's have a look at the remaining three results of round two here in South Australia today. At the Adelaide Oval, Norwood defeated Sturt by 83 points. At Woodville, Central District defeated Woodville by 14 points. A close game there. At Prospect, North Adelaide had an easy win over South Adelaide. The margin there, 73 points. Round three in the VFL today, some interesting results. Collingwood defeated Richmond. Carlton defeated Essendon by 72 points. Hawthorne had a 21-point win over Sydney. Footscray defeated Fitzroy by 51 points. St Kilda defeated North Melbourne by 26 points. And Melbourne defeated Geelong by 8 points. And tomorrow the Brisbane Bears take on the West Coast Eagles. Next week here in South Australia, a split round. Norwood and North at Football Park. That will be a very interesting clash. West Adelaide and Glenelg at Richmond on Monday. Central District 
will play Port Adelaide at Football Park and that too will be an interesting match. Central District on a real roll at the moment and Port Adelaide just struggling a bit because they played three games in the last seven days. Torrens and Woodville is the second game at Football Park. An important one for Woodville. They've lost their first two of the season so far. Torrens also an important one for them. And at the Adelaide Oval, South Adelaide and Sturt. And I do hope they get a reasonable crowd at the Adelaide Oval. And that's obviously an important one for both of those teams. With South Adelaide, well, they're struggling at the moment, aren't they? And uh, they were thrashed today. Sturt, uh, on the other hand, although they were thrashed today, they have shown some good signs. But uh, that uh, match certainly important for both of those sides. I must make mention, Phil Harrison was taken off the ground on a stretcher in our match at the Glenelg Oval. Uh, I uh, believe it's concussion. We'll have more on that later tonight uh, in the late program. But uh, I hope Phil Harrison is OK because it did look pretty nasty. It wasn't a rough tackle. It was a fair tackle, but he hit himself rather awkwardly when he went down and uh, I don't think he was conscious as he came off the ground. That is our program for tonight. As I said, 10.15 tonight, League Football Action, a late one with Kim Dillon and myself. Stand by for the news. Until tonight, good night.